Uh, I'm Jin Dong Kim. I'm uh, working in uh, DB series in Japan. And I have, I have been working in uh, this bio NAP community uh, for a long time, like uh, 20 years. And, um, uh, the Pubble Notation System, which I will present uh, today, is recently my the biggest uh, project. Today, I will uh, talk about this um, COVID-19 at Pubble Notation project. And its goal is um, toward an open collaboration, open collaboration for annotating COVID-19 <laughs> literature. So the slogan would be, um, let's annotate COVID-19 related papers together. That would be the slogan. And you may know uh, there are a couple of data sets of uh, papers which are related to COVID-19, like uh, LitCOVID from NCBI and also COVID-19. And um, since the release of data, release of th those um, literature data sets, quite a few groups are producing annotations to the literature collections and making those annotation data sets available to the public. And um, I see um, those groups who are producing uh, annotations to those uh, document collections are from uh, many different uh, communities, like um, some are from NAP community, some are from uh, bioinformatics community, some are from semantic web community, and uh, they all have uh, very different uh, expertise. And um, this project, COVID-19 at Purple Notation Project is all about integrating those annotation data sets produced by many different groups uh, on this pub annotation platform because um, this pub annotation platform has been developed for that uh, purpose uh, for a long time. So this is the uh, front page of the pub annotation. It is an open repository of text annotation uh, with a focus on literature of life sciences. So it has annotations to uh, articles of PubMed or PMC. And um, it currently has um, uh, almost 400 uh, annotation data sets. And um, it is also an open platform of text annotation. So you can develop uh, text annotation using this uh, pub annotation platform. And as a repository of annotation data sets, which collect uh, annotation data sets from various groups, the most important function of a pub annotation, function of a pub annotation is uh, text alignment and also annotation alignment. Uh, this function is very important because um, many groups, when they produce annotations to uh, articles of life sciences, they usually take texts from PubMed or PMC and they produce annotations to the uh, text they took from uh, PubMed or PMC. Uh, but uh, during the annotation process or during the pre-processing process or post-processing process or during sourcing the text from PubMed or PMC, there is a very high chance that um, the texts are changed, slightly changed. Um, there are many regions of those changes. Uh, for example, uh, if it is a full text article, the text does not have fully linear structure. Uh, for example, you know, uh, captions of uh, tables and figures, they are not in a linear structure of text. And uh, 
because of those uh, non-linear uh, structure, uh, the result who are sourcing text from uh, PMC are not all uh, same to each other. And uh, some, some annotation projects do uh, pre-processing, like um, uh, a representative example is some, some groups change uh, Greek letters into ASCII sequences like ARPA to ALPHA. So all this kind of uh, pre-processing uh, can uh, cause a change to the text. So when we uh, collect annotation data sets from different uh, groups, the text may be different to each other. So we have to uh, solve the problem. And uh, we implemented a kind of text blast. And when we receive annotations from uh, other groups, uh, those uh, annotations are aligned to the canonical text we have. Uh, and um, thanks to the uh, alignment uh, function, oops. for example, uh, in this page, you can see um, example of aligned annotations. For example, uh, the first one is some pop data annotation produced by NCBI. The second one is uh, MetaMap and the SEMLAB annotation uh, produced John, by- One uh, moment. Uh, now, now I'm seeing that, that your widescreen uh, is now actually causing problem because it's okay, now I see. Your font's very small. I see. Uh, how about- Maybe- No? Yeah, that's much better. Thank you. Okay. So um, the first example is a um, contribution from uh, NCBI uh, with their Poptator annotation. And the second one is uh, a contribution from uh, Lister Hill Research Center uh, using their MetaMap and the SEMLAB. And the third one is um, Kenya Medical Co-reference Annotation, which was uh, produced by uh, Singapore Group and the University of Tokyo. The last one is some NG annotation, which was also produced by University of Tokyo. These annotations are produced by all different groups, but they are all nicely aligned to the same text, thanks to the uh, alignment function of pub annotation. Um, when we received those um, data sets, uh, the, the original text was all, were all different to each other, actually. Uh, and we got back to the slide. Um, so that sounds kind of like a, a sort of a normalization process or a canonicalization process that you're doing, is that correct? I would say it's more canonicalization. Uh, yeah. Or uh, it, it's very similar to blast, I would say. Okay, I don't know what I don't Just, know. About um, blast. Oh. oh, oh, for alignment. Okay, yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, six points alignment. Yes. Okay. Is it using the same kind of algorithm as BLAST? The same kind of algorithm as BLAST? The algorithm is very different. It's just um, the effect is um, similar. Okay, sure. yeah, all right, thank you. Okay, yeah, all right, thank you. The algorithm is different because um, BLAST, the algorithm of BLAST is kind of lossy algorithm. So during alignment, you may lose your notation, which is not good for uh, text annotation. So, um, our alignment algorithm is a perfect alignment algorithm. So you will not lose any annotation during the alignment process. Right, okay. okay. And the uh, concept of this COVID-19 pub annotation uh, project is um, uh, we are emphasizing that it is an open collaboration. It's open. so. Um, 
uh, anyone can actually contribute with uh, their annotation data sets, uh, even without talking to uh, ourselves, to us, our uh, power annotation team. Uh, they can contribute to their annotation and their annotation data set will become publicly available immediately. And uh, there is a home page of this uh, project and uh, there is a document on how to contribute with the annotation data set. Basically, the process is um, if you can produce annotation to text, uh, you can download the, the document collection from pub annotation or from um, the project homepage of lit COVID or COVID-19. And then you produce annotation using your annotation tool or I don't know, manual annotation. And then uh, you can contribute your annotation data set to pub annotation. Then the annotation data set will be integrated to other annotation data sets already stored on pub annotation in a fair way, we hope. And so today, actually, I would like to talk more about this aspect of fairness. And um, I think I understand the concept of fair principles, but honestly, I don't have uh, much experience with the principles. Uh, so well, from the documents, from the official documents, findable is about uh, metadata. Uh, and uh, identifier. And accessibility is about putting the data set in a trustable repository. And I think pub annotation is now, it is um, recognized as a trusted repository, uh, at least in a, a bio and epic community. Uh, and the interoperability is about metadata from the document of uh, fair principles. And the reusability is about uh, specification of uh, license and the provenance. Uh, I think I understand the concept, uh, but um, we are more focusing on uh, a little bit different aspect of fairness. Uh, it's more technical aspects. And uh, for findability, we think not only the data set, but also the uh, fine-grained annotation instances should be uh, easily findable. So it is about uh, searchability. Yeah. And accessibility, uh, for accessibility, we uh, implemented uh, pers persistent URLs for each data set and also for each uh, instances of uh, annotations. And also uh, interoperability, we are more focusing on like um, alignment. Without the alignment, those annotations uh, cannot be used uh, uh, together uh, because um, those um, base texts are different. Uh, it would be very tricky to, uh, to use them uh, together. But on pub annotation, uh, those annotations are all aligned to the canonical text, so it's um, kind of easy to use them together or in comparison. And uh, also uh, those um, semantic labels also should be uh, aligned, uh, but at the moment we are not doing anything for that part. And also well, reusability. Uh, so um, all the annotations and data sets are bookmarkable. I mean, all the annotations uh, on pub annotation are bookmarkable and they are embeddable in other uh, documents and they are available in, uh, various, in various formats like uh, JSON and tab separated values format. And RDF is um, still on the development, but um, 
we hope we can um, make them available in those three formats. And in fact, in uh, Dong, before you before you yes. go on, <clears throat> I just okay. wanted to mention that um, Alyssa Handel has done some uh, very good work uh, further defining and spelling out and uh, giving more concrete guidance about the FAIR principles. Mm -hmm. And she calls them uh, FAIR-TLC. FAIR-TLC. So looking at that, because she's done a lot of really good work. In that. David, okay. can you post a link to that, please? Uh, yeah, I'll see if I can find yeah. that. And I'll make it, I'll put it in the notes. Put it in the notes. Okay. So um, don't don't get me wrong. I'm I'm so uh, we have been focusing on uh, these uh, aspects of fairness, our interpretation, but um, that does not mean we are kind of neglecting uh, this um, uh, kind of fairness of uh, this uh, fair principles. We would like to uh, address all of the uh, fairness principles. Just um, I mean, uh, we we don't have um, much experience with uh, uh, fair principles. So um, if we can get uh, help from people who have um, good experience with those fair principles, it would be really good. Uh, and um, in fact. Uh, when we are developing uh, those um, power notation uh, uh, system, uh, actually Google Maps was the, the model of the, set of the power notation system. So uh, I thought, actually I like Google Maps very much because um, I think Google Maps is the most successful uh, annotation system ever. Uh, and uh, because um, uh, even people without, uh, without IT uh, expertise, they can use uh, Google Maps very easily. So many people are using this annotation system very easily and they are exchanging, sharing their annotation uh, result with their friends and with their uh, colleagues very easily. And now Google Maps is a um, very important part of our life. And um, with this annotation system, uh, we can easily share, or we can easily find answer to this kind of uh, questions like um, what restaurants are there near DBCRS, my, my institute. And um, uh, you can easily get the answer uh, using this uh, Google Map. And um, we hope uh, with power notation, we can answer to the same kind of questions like uh, uh, what annotations are there for the third paragraph of the paper of any specific paper? Maybe. So um, there is a demo link. Uh, so, uh, this is the paper uh, text of. Can you make the font a bit bigger? Okay. This is a paper included in the COVID-19 uh, collection. And uh, if you see the address window, the address window, uh, that is the unique persistent URL to this specific uh, part of this uh, paper, which is highlighted in yellow. And uh, you will see to this specific text, uh, what annotation data sets are annotating this specific text. And you will see them in uh, tab separated, uh, no, no, tab uh, table format, JSON, and also um, list view, like um, this is uh, Mondo annotation, FMA, Uber annotation, 
uh, HP annotation. Uh, this is um, IDO ontology annotation. And also you can see them in one text. Oh, Oops. there is a, there is a still bug it seems like. So uh, it should be shown without uh, logging in into this system. So we have to fix it uh, quickly. So, uh, oops, sorry. So these are all annotations that all annotations were about that particular section that you highlighted. That section that you highlighted. Yes, yeah, that were highlighted here in yellow. Yeah, nice. Can, can you expand a little bit? How can would you, you expect users? to actually read this or use this? Actually read this or use this? Okay, so let me, let me get back uh, to that uh, issue uh, soon after explaining this example. So uh, just before I showed uh, the annotations from different projects in the list, but in, in this view, all those annotations are collapsed into one uh, screen. So you will see uh, these annotations are from Mondo annotation. These are from FMA Uberon. Uh, the, this is from IDO. Yeah. So, I mean, what I wanted to show you was um, these annotations are available in, in various ways like um, uh, two different uh, visualization. And you can also get uh, that annotation in JSON. Uh, and uh, you can also access them in um, table format. Uh, so it is all our effort uh, to improve uh, the usability of uh, this uh, notation data sets. And um, so uh, about the application. So one application would be uh, they will search some specific uh, collection of annotations and they will download uh, the data and maybe they will use it for their uh, data mining purposes uh, also. And another application is um, these um, annotations are all kind of embeddable uh, in other uh, documents. So, um, so they can use uh, these annotations as a provenance uh, for other data sets. Uh, so I showed you uh, this example. Uh, this is an example of actually uh, embedding. So um, this box is a textile uh, instance, uh, which is a JavaScript uh, rendering uh, library. And uh, if you know the URL of this annotation, you can embed the annotation, the visualization of the annotation in any document. Uh, that's one way of reusing uh, the annotation. It's like um, Google Map, you know, uh, if you uh, open a homepage of, of a restaurant, you will find a, a map to the restaurant, which is actually a Google Map. Uh, and you can use the annotation in pub notation in that way. Uh, so you can think um, this one box is like a Google map uh, instance in a homepage of a restaurant. And, uh, no. Okay. 
Uh, Jindal, can I just ask about Hex AE? The for okay. render. Well, where's that from? That's um, also our product. We we oh, ourselves okay. developed uh, this. Um, so uh, if we open this, thing. okay. This page shows some how to embed annotation in an HTML document. For example, uh, one textile instance is a div of which the class is textile editor. And you can give the URL of an annotation uh, to this div instance, then it will be rendered in uh, in your browser, in your document. Nice. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, another type of uh, example uh, question would be uh, for Google Maps, uh, maybe um, you can easily find answer to this kind of question, like where I approach in Japan and the Google Maps will give you all the uh, locations of airports in Japan. And we also would like to uh, answer to this kind of question, like uh, where in literature SARS is mentioned together with anatomical locations. And um, this is a demo. So uh, using uh, Sparkle. And as you can see, the result of this Sparkle result is also uh, bookmarkable. And you can always revisit uh, this page. Uh, with uh, Zoom opened, uh, my, my computer is very slow. So this is doing a Sparkle query against the uh, pub annotation database. Yes, yes. Okay. So there's an RDF vocabulary to describe the annotations? RDF for? A RDF vocabulary to describe the annotations. Yes, yes. Uh, we designed our own annotation uh, scheme, which is um, compatible with open annotation, but we added uh, one layer to make the uh, Sparkle query uh, much simpler. And um, this is the Sparkle query. Can you see it? Uh, uh, yes. Sparkle. Okay, and um, you can see the result of the Sparkle query. So this Sparkle is for uh, all the actually sentences which uh, which have uh, this SARS annotation, which is a Mondo, which has this Mondo ID. And also um, it is mentioned together with an anatomic, some anatomical uh, entities. Uh, okay. And uh, okay. Uh, so, but um, this um, idea phygation is not uh, like, um, so all the annotations on pub annotation are not automatically convert, immediately converted into RDF. Uh, let me show you. Uh, for example, uh, this is, uh, the front page of this Mondo annotation to code 19 uh, documents. And no, 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 it, it's not a front page. Sorry. 
this is the front PC. And uh, if you are the owner of this project, you will have um, this, uh, you, you will have access to these functions. Um, there is this um, IDF files uh, button. So if you click it, it will be converted into IDF statements. Uh, so there is uh, another step after you upload your notation on pub notation, uh, you need to click this button to convert the notation into IDF. So Jindong, I'm just curious about and, uh, why they need to do that click step to do the conversion. Why, why don't you automatically do the conversion? Uh, because um, it's kind of expensive function uh, okay. for now. Uh, the conversion and also the sparkle endpoint. You know, sparkle endpoint is um, quite slow. With uh, more notation, it will get uh, slower. So right. that's why we put this another uh, process. Yeah, okay, yep. Okay. Uh, we are currently using a startup uh, for the sparkle and the point. Uh, okay. And, um, you know, uh, because um, this power notation system is also a development platform for literature notation. So some projects are very frequently updated, changed. So which means um, if we make the uh, identification process uh, automatic, then uh, the sparkle endpoint will be very uh, frequently uh, changed, uh, which is not good for the performance of the sparkle endpoint. You know, many sparkle endpoints are updated, uh, 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 I mean, uh, optimized for um, kind of one-time uh, data load and many time use. So many sparkle endpoints are not uh, tuned for frequent update. Uh, right. okay. That's why we put uh, the, that, that process. Since you're talking about updates, I'd just like to leave a question you can answer anytime you want about what the process of updates is. And also very importantly, uh, how do you handle provenance? What kind of provenance uh, do you, information do you keep and make available? Yeah, feel free to answer anytime, not necessarily now. Okay, so um, that would be related to the, uh, we get back to the uh, this uh, first principle, uh, this um, reusability and uh, the metadata of um, provenance. Uh, am I correct? Well, that that is one use for the provenance. Okay. So yeah. they also suppose I want to compare annotations from different groups and I want to understand how they were made in order to, let's say, have a measure of trustability, trustworthiness or quality of the annotation. Provenance information would be an important uh, kind of information to have. Okay. At the moment, uh, power notation does not have uh, any uh, function to, to store uh, that uh, provenance uh, metadata. Uh, currently, power notation only has um, this uh, free text description uh, box. So uh, the the contributor can can describe uh, their data in a free text. That's currently uh, what Pubo Notation has. But um, we are uh, collaborating with uh, this group of Nancy ID in uh, in state. Uh, and Nancy ID is his her group is developing this um, left grid. Uh, platform, which is a kind of a workflow management system for to compose uh, NAP uh, pipelines. And the, with this project, Nancy 
is um, very focusing on uh, uh, storing all the provenance of the, the annotation. And um, we are beginning collaboration with uh, Nancy IDs group uh, to kind of find a kind of a standard uh, metadata description of uh, provenance of uh, NLP pipelines. And she, uh, her uh, labs grid system has some fairly good uh, provenance uh, recording system. Mm, and I think um, uh, we would like to uh, reuse uh, her system for that uh, purpose. Yeah. Uh, Jin Dong, what group did you say that is? And was did you say NCID? Nancy, N A N C Y, Nancy ID. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. And her project is Labs Labs Grid, uh, which is uh, one of the DARPA project of state. So uh, in short, we ourselves does not have um, expertise or uh, long experience with provenance uh, recording. So uh, we, we are uh, very interested in collaborating with uh, groups with uh, a good, good expertise uh, of it. And uh, this last slide shows some um, kind of our road map, road map. So for the, actually, um, this is my second presentation about this project. And um, in my first presentation also, I talked about this um, beginning constantly updated collection of annotations. And um, we almost uh, finished implementation of it and um, we will soon begin uh, this uh, updating. Who is because, um, for the updates? The contributor or you guys try to pull it again? Okay, so we, I mean, the pub annotation team will update the, the document collection and we implemented a kind of notification system to the contributors so that uh, when the update actually happens in the document collection, the contributor of annotation data sets will be notified and we hope they can produce annotation to the uh, additional yeah. documents and they they contribute the annotations to their uh, data sets. And we ourselves in, in, in DBCLS, we are also uh, contributing annotation with uh, our this uh, public dictionary system. It is a dictionary based annotation system. Uh, it has a kind of plug-in system of dictionaries. So, um, for example, uh, let me show you a Mondo annotation using uh, dictionaries. So, this is a um, demo page of uh, Mondo annotation using uh, dictionaries. So if you submit this text, uh, the pub dictionary system will produce a dictionary based annotation uh, like this. And again, you are now watching an embedded instance of a textile here. Because um, if you submit this uh, blog of text to pub dictionaries uh, in a post method, then the public, public dictionary system will respond, respond uh, with this JSON, uh, which contains the result of annotation. And uh, uh, this is textile rendering of uh, this JSON structure. 
And um, <clears throat> textile, uh, no, not textile, uh, pop dictionaries is actually, uh, oops, here. This is pop dictionary system. It is again open repository of dictionaries. So anyone can unload their dictionaries in this system. And anyone can annotate their text using any dictionaries, any dictionary uh, in pop dictionaries. Uh, that's the concept of this pop dictionary system. And uh, we are developing uh, annotation system using public dictionaries, which means actually we are developing dictionaries uh, based on these ontologies, Mondo, Uberon, uh, HP, and others. And uh, the performance is like um, for the whole uh, called uh, data set. Uh, the annotation takes, uh, I don't know, like um, three or four or five hours. That's the performance of uh, of dictionaries. And um, Wait, I'm sorry. So, can you can you say that again? It takes three or four hours to do what? Hours to do what? To annotate the whole code nineteen data set. Okay, as as an automated process. Yes, yes, as an automated process. Okay. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay. And, um, uh, but um, our plan includes, um, we will also receive uh, manual annotations. Manual annotations means um, that the amount of annotation would be very small, but I think um, those annotations also would be very important because um, uh, there is high chance that those manual annotations will be very accurate and uh, that annotations um, represent uh, real uh, interest or interest of uh, uh, biologists or bioinformaticians or, or medical practitioners. Uh, like uh, Google Maps, we also would like to uh, receive, collect uh, manual annotations. Many, many small uh, manual annotation data sets. And um, for that, we, so when we, we are always thinking that uh, when the system becomes um, stable, uh, after all the known bugs are addressed, uh, we would have issue uh, wide open to the public for um, call for contribution. And actually, we are developing all those systems, pub annotation, pub dictionaries, textile as open source projects. So all the systems are in uh, GitHub and uh, they are released uh, with a very uh, liberal uh, license condition like a MIT license uh, conditions. So uh, we are trying to make them open source projects, but uh, it was not very successful. I mean, uh, we hope uh, other uh, other developers also uh, take the source code and uh, make their contributions, but not many uh, contributors uh, so far we could uh, find. But we really would like to make them as a open source projects. And uh, I am uh, organizing this um, BLA hackathon. It is an uh, annual hackathon. Uh, it already has a uh, page. So this hackathon is uh, BLA's uh, acronym of Biomedical Link Foundation Hackathon. And uh, we are organizing it every year uh, in Japan. And we secured uh, the, the venue and the funding already, but uh, 
in this uh, pandemic situation, we don't know if we can uh, hold it uh, as a face-to-face -face, uh, event. Uh, right. But uh, we would like to reserve it as an opportunity to, to discuss the more more about this uh, project. And uh, that's all I have now. Uh, have, I have one quick question. I have one uh, quick question. Okay. In, in your first slide, there is a, a bubble with COVID-19 Twitter. Okay. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? That's um, that's that, that's another important uh, text data set. Uh, COVID nineteen Twitter is, uh, uh, as the name uh, implies, is a collection of Twitter, collection of tweets related to COVID nineteen. It is compiled by uh, Georgia State University, uh, Juan Bandas group, and um, it is, I think, um, uh, important uh, collection. And we would like to uh, load it uh, in a public annotation also, uh, but um, we still have a um, technical issue to load the data in public annotation because the structure is very different. Uh, no, so um, our plan is to treat a timeline, one timeline of tweets as one document. And, uh, and also, you know, uh, Twitter data cannot be exchanged as they are. If you are familiar with the Twitter mining, maybe you know this term uh, hydration and dehydration. Yeah. Are you from? Yes, yes. So we, we, we so all the tweet data are, are um, shared in a form uh, dehydrated. Am I correct? Dehydrated form, right? So, but we, we, sort of we a have to hydrate them. Okay. 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 So um, that, that part, so we are still working on uh, implementation of that, that function, hydration and dehydration function. Uh, once it is done, uh, we would like to uh, add it, uh, add that data set as another data set for this COVID-19 public notation project. Great, thanks. Um, Jin Dong, I have a question too. Uh, are you familiar with the Cochrane crowd? Um, I don't know a lot about it, but I, my understanding is that it's a crowdsourced effort for uh, looking at technical literature. And I wonder if, if pub annotation might be able to use the results of their Okay. Uh, actually, I don't know that the project, but if you give me uh, the, the name of it, maybe I, I, I would like to look at. Um, do others have questions? Others have questions? Okay, well, thank you very much, Shindong, thank for much, excellent Shindong. presentation. Thank you very much. Like wonderful work. Thank you. And sorry to make you stay up sorry so late tonight for this presentation. <laughs> it's okay for me.